Hello networking enthusiasts, welcome back to our exploration of powerful networking tools. Today we are diving into something you may not have fully explored yet. Most of you are probably familiar with Nmap, the fantastic network scanning and security auditing tool. But did you know that by installing Nmap you also unlock a hidden gem? Introducing NPing, a highly versatile network diagnostic tool that goes beyond basic scans. With NPing you can generate custom network packets, measure responses and perform in-depth troubleshooting and security audits. Whether you are testing network conditions or simulating traffic for analysis, NPing offers you a world of possibilities. I'm Philip, and today I'm excited to show you how powerful NPing can be. Let's jump in. NPing allows you to craft various types of packets as well as manipulate header fields. For example, you can set a source and destination IP and port, time to leave value, sequence numbers, don't fragment bit, TCP flags, TCP window size, ICMP type, and so on. Most fields you can think of can be modified. Why is it useful? For example, for testing network latency and performance, uh, testing firewall by injecting custom packets, simulating denial of service attacks, application testing, time sensitive analysis, path M2 discovery, troubleshooting routing issues, you name it. NPing offers six basic modes of operation ICMP, TCP, TCP Connect, UDP, ARP, and Traceroute. Let's explore each probe type and its usefulness, starting with ICMP. We'll begin with a basic ICMP ping test, which sends an ICMP echo request and expects an ICMP echo reply. To perform this, we'll use the following command, npink icmp and the target IP address. Note, npink requires root privileges since it constructs and sends custom packets using raw sockets, bypassing the normal network stack. Raw packets, creation and sniffing incoming packets for responses both require elevated permissions. What do we have here? Here's the information that the packet was sent, when it was sent, the protocol type, source and destination addresses, type of request, in our case it's ICMP echo request, that's type 8 code 0, ICMP identifier and sequence number, time to leave, IP identifier and total packet length. The output looks clean and tidy. Then there's the reply, where we see the time when the packet was received. We could calculate round trip time by subtracting this value from this value. Further, we have the protocol, source and destination IP, type of request, it's an echo reply, that's type 0 code 0, ICMP identifier, Mind that it matches the identifier sent in the echo request. This identifier allows us to link those two together. So we know that this particular echo reply was sent to that specific echo request as we can have multiple pings running simultaneously. Then there's a sequence number and the rest of the fields. If you look closely at the ICMP sequence number, you'll see that this number is incremented for each new request and is echoed back in the reply to help match requests with replies. Sequence number is increasing, so it allows you to identify out-of-order packets. The output also shows round-trip time, packet loss percentage, and summary of sent and received packets. By default, NPing sends five probes, but this can be modified using the dash C option to set the custom count, let's say three. You can also probe multiple IPs. NPing summarizes the results for each IP, making it useful for comparing responses from multiple targets like Cloudflare DNS and Google DNS. You can even specify an address range, let's say slash 28. I will also adjust the probe frequency using the delay option to send packets more frequently. Instead of specifying the delay, we can also specify the rate. This is how many requests to send per second, let's say 20. If you only want the summary and not individual probe details, use the dash Q option. To sum up, the ICMP method is especially useful for checking if a host is online, latency and round trip time analysis, probing multiple targets, address range scanning, high frequency probing, monitoring packet loss over time, or even simulating flood attacks. Additionally, you can set any ICMP code you want and any packet size you like, which can be useful for troubleshooting and testing network behavior and analyzing how routers and firewalls handle different ICMP traffic types and packet sizes. Now let's switch to one of the most interesting modes, TCP. In this mode, we can generate and send various kinds of TCP packets. 
We'll start by checking if a remote TCP port is open using a technique known as half open scanning. This scan sends a SYN packet and waits for a SYN AG response without completing the TCP handshake. Here's the command we'll use nping tcp to specify we are sending a TCP probe, c1 to send a single packet, let's send a SYN flag to initiate a TCP connection, that's the default, target port is 443 and destination is google.com. What do we see here? Here's the protocol source IP and source port, destination IP and destination port, S indicates we've sent a SYN flag, then there's the TTL value, IP identification value, total length, TCP sequence number and window size. If we look at the second line, we see that the target responded with SYNAC, which means the TCP port is open. To refresh your memory, in a typical TCP handshake, the client sends a SYN packet to initiate the connection, the server responds with SYN AC, and then the client replies with AC to complete the handshake. In this case, since we are doing half open scanning, we stop after receiving the SYN AC. Additionally, the server sent us a maximum segment size value, which represents the largest chunk of data in bytes the server can handle in a single TCP segment, excluding headers. At the end of the output, there's a summary with the round trip time, number of packets sent and received, and any packet loss. But why would you use TCP ping? Many firewalls and security systems block or limit ICMP traffic to prevent scanning or denial of service attacks, so ICMP pings might fail. Some networks also implement ICMP rate limiting, which could result in inconsistent responses, skewing your perception of network health. TCP ping, on the other hand, simulates real-world conditions by establishing a handshake on the transport layer, providing a more accurate sense of service availability. You can target specific ports, uh, verify if an application, for example, a web server is actually reachable. Just so you know, if we send a SYN packet and receive SYN AC, it indicates a port is open. If we receive a reset, it indicates the port is closed. Let me demonstrate by sending three probes to a server with port 443 closed. Do you see that? We've sent a SYN and got a reset. It indicates that the port is closed, but you still get the round trip time measurement. Mind that the port can be technically opened, but the firewall may be blocking the connection. In such cases, you won't get any reply at all. You can also check multiple targets simultaneously, for example, testing port 80 and 443 on Google and Amazon. I'll just specify two ports and later two targets. Both ports are open on both hosts, as indicated by the SYNAG responses, and the summary table provides the round trip times for each target. Remember, if you get a SYN AC, port is open. If you get a reset, the port is closed. If you don't get a reply, then the firewall may be blocking the connection or the host is down. It's possible to include custom data in your TCP packets. I will start a traffic capture using ngrep to look for the string hello on port 8080. Now let me send a TCP SYN to port 8080 of a host on my local network, embedding the string hello in the payload. As you can see, the payload contains hello. It's also possible to send payloads in hex or random data of specified length. To sum up, the NPing TCP method is useful because it allows you to check the availability of specific services by targeting TCP ports, bypassing ICMP restrictions often imposed by firewalls. It simulates real-world connection through the three-way handshake, providing a more accurate view of service availability. Additionally, it enables you to test multiple ports and hosts simultaneously, set various TCP flags to test firewall behavior, and even send custom payloads for application or firewall testing. It's also possible to set the TCP sequence number, acknowledgement number, source port, checksum, and so on. This makes it a versatile tool for network diagnosing and troubleshooting. Another mode of operation is called TCP Connect. In this mode, instead of crafting raw packets, NPing requests the underlying operating system to establish a connection. This is the same type of access used by web browsers and other applications. In TCP Connect mode, NPing performs a full TCP handshake. Let's start a traffic capture on TCP port 443. Now let's issue a connection request to google.com on TCP port 443 using NPing. 
As you can see, we only get information that the connection has been successfully established. In this mode, the connection establishment is handled by the operating system, so we don't see the actual packet contents like we did in the TCP mode. Instead, we only get status information about whether the connection was established, the round trip time and the number of connection attempts and successes. If we inspect the traffic capture, we can observe the standard TCP three-way handshake, followed by the connection being closed with a fin packet. TCP connect mode is especially useful when the user lacks privileges to send raw packets, but still needs to test connectivity. Another mode of operation is UDP. This mode allows you to craft custom UDP packets, which is useful for interacting with services like streaming servers, gaming servers, or for techniques like port knocking. Let's start by sending a UDP packet to Google DNS with a time to leave value of one. As expected, we received an ICMP message from the first hop indicating that TTL expired. The TTL value is decremented by one at each hop to prevent packets from endlessly circulating through a network in case of routing loops. Now let's increase the TTL value to two. This time the packet was dropped by the second hop. Let's try again with a TTL of three. Do you see what we are doing here? We are effectively performing a manual trace route using UDB packets. By inspecting the source address of the ICMP time exceeded messages, we can determine the path the packet are taking to reach the destination. Of course, NPing also offers a trace route mode for tracing the path packets take to target. To use it, simply run NPing-TR and the target. By default, NPing uses ICMP probes for traceroute, but you can switch to UDP probes with uh, dash UDP. And for more advanced network testing, you can perform TCP-based traceroute with dash TCP. This flexibility allows you to customize traceroutes to suit different network environments and test specific protocols. All right, let me show you something really cool. It's called uh, the echo mode. The best way to demonstrate its functionality is by setting it up on external cloud VM. I will start the NPing echo server using the ES parameter, which stands for echo server, along with dummy password. I will specify the listening interface and use the NC option for no crypt, as some NPing releases have issues with encryption. Finally, I will enable verbose mode. Now the NPing instance is listening on port 9929 TCP. Next, I will switch to my local VM and send a ping. I will set the packet count to one, use the EC option for echo client mode, provide the same password as on the server, specify NC for no encryption, and indicate that I want to use TCP for the connection test. Lastly, I will provide the IP address of the echo server. What do we have here? In the first line, we observe that a SYN packet was sent from our VM to the target server. The output shows the TTL value, identification number, total packet length, sequence number, and more. Now the second line is particularly interesting. It shows what the remote server captured. We sent a packet with the source IP 10.230, but the target server sees the source IP as 83.68 and so on. This indicates that the source NAT is occurring along the way. Additionally, if we look at the target, it is set to 129, 159 and so on. Yet, the remote end sees the target as 10.0.0.51, indicating that destination NAT is also happening. Essentially, the echo server and client establish a side channel that the server uses to send the original packet back to the client, allowing for immediate comparison to detect any changes. We can also see that TTL is now 51 and our original TTL was 64, suggesting that the target is 13 hops away. Finally, in the third line, we see the actual reply from the target, which sent a reset. It's also possible to send packets using UDP or using ICMP. This technique is incredibly useful for troubleshooting any changes that might occur to the packet along the way, such as NAT or transparent proxies that might alter your packets. The last NPing mode we'll discuss today is ARP, Address Resolution Protocol. This mode allows you to send ARP requests to discover the MAC address of a server on a local network. For example, we can use the following command to get the MAC address. 
It's important to note that while this tool is useful for legitimate network management tasks, it can also be misused for R poisoning or other malicious activities. And that wraps our deep dive into NPing. From generating custom packets to analyzing responses, we've explored how NPing can be a powerful ally in your network troubleshooting toolkit. Whether you are simulating traffic, testing firewalls, or diagnosing routing issues, NPing has got you covered with its versatility and precision. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into networking tools and techniques. Don't forget to drop your thoughts or any questions in the comments below. I love hearing your feedback and ideas for future videos. Stay tuned for more hands-on tutorials as we continue to uncover the power of advanced networking tools. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.